Hey, Pepin. Yo, 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 yo. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about the old world. Like China? A lot like China, but a little more northwest. Like the greasy one. Ooh, I love them greasy. And I've been thinking about how they had a lot of different deities that they worshipped. Oh, like uh, Zeus, Poseidon. That Did you say Poseidon? Yeah, Poseidon. <laughs> Is that the god of puss? <laughs> yes. Outstanding. Uh, That's my favorite god. I worship Poseidon on a daily basis. <laughs> hey, Nate, I think we need to talk. <laughs> May Poseidon rain pussy down upon me. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going, Pepin? Yo, yo, how you doing, meter? I'm doing great. You avoided my question, though. I asked how you're doing. I don't want to answer. We are joined today by a very special guest. We're talking to Liz from the Savage Mythology Podcast. How's it going, Liz? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for asking. See, that's how it's done, Nathan. So what makes this podcast savage? Um, mythology in general is savage. It's hella savage. That's totally fair. How many people get beheaded on your podcast? Surprisingly, not a lot, but a lot get raped. <sighs> oh! Okay, listen, we know a lot about that. We know a lot about incest. That's pretty much what mythology is, is incest rape. Yep. It's kind of like modern porn. <laughs> or mytholo- mythological porn. Old world porn. Old, old world becomes new world. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> Those prophecies. Listen, Nate, we just tapped in to the, a great thought, and that's that we need to start doing mythology porn. And it will have its own website. Like and just me and you? Well, yeah. Okay. I call Zeus. <laughs> that's okay. a good one to have. He's the one that ma- mainly does that kind of shit. <laughs> I'll be Aphrodite. Oh. Ooh, she's petty as fuck. Oh, or I could be Medusa. We a, we, well, because Medusa was more beautiful than Aphrodite. And that's she's why she's not a god, though. No, she she's wasn't. Gorgon. Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she was. Medusa was not. Okay. Medusa was raped in Athena's uh, temple. So Athena, uh, like, kind of was a jerk to her and made her into a Gorgon. Yeah, but wasn't that be- so? Wasn't it? I listened to this the other day. This is my this is my recollection. So Athena, well, this girl got. Uh, made Medusa and then she ended up being like more pretty than Athena and Athena was kind of jealous and she was a priest and everything and then Poseidon keeps hitting on her but no she's like I'm a priestess I don't do that kind of stuff and then Poseidon rapes her and then Athena has all these multiple uh, motivations going on she's like okay Medusa I honestly have no idea if Medusa was pretty or not but from my understanding she was just raped in her temple by Poseidon I think so yeah and, of course, you know, being ancient mythology, it was uh, Medusa's fault, not Poseidon's. Yep. It, I mean, that's how it works, right? Wow. That's absolutely savage. Oh, I get yeah. it. Yeah. So you were talking off air about something that made us turn on the mics, and that was a golden shower. <laughs> yes. Can, tell me, can you tell us the story about the most golden of showers (laughs) yeah so uh zeus as on my podcast we call him the ultimate man whore or the fuck father because he likes to just screw around with everybody (laughs) fuck father yeah hashtag fuck father hashtag fuck father yeah (laughs) that's going in the show notes yeah so um he like had a huge thing for this woman and there's a prophecy her dad was like a king or something like that um, and he, there's a prophecy that she was going to have, a, she was going to become pregnant, have a child and that child was going to kill him. So he locked her up in a tower or underneath his castle, who knows where, somewhere he locked her up. Um, so that Zeus or whoever couldn't impregnate her. Well, Zeus decided, um, I'm just going to change into like a golden shower, golden rain, whatever, and, or mist even, and came through and impregnated her. I piss on you, is what he said? Probably. (laughs) So, hold on. He didn't turn into a golden shower that you can actually shower in. I mean, I guess, okay. He didn't turn into metal. He turned into urine? 
I have no idea. Or is that the vague area of the, the story? That's the, it's all vague. But it's, yeah, essentially it's he turned into some sort of gold liquid. A gold liquid that impregnated. It came from the sky mm -hmm. and created a baby. Yes. <laughs> Why did it have to be golden? That's my biggest question. Because it's Zeus. He oh. wants to be extra as fuck. He is as extra as humanly possible. <laughs> like, it's not enough to, like, have sex with somebody. You have to be some weird thing, like a swan or a bull or a shower of golden liquid. So how was this story explanatory of anything? Did it explain something? Or is it just, like, a story of Zeus? I think it's just a story of Zeus. I don't think any of his stories really make sense because it's just Zeus. He just goes around and screws anything with a vagina. That's, That's pretty much all, like Zeus's whole thing. So why doesn't like how does Hera not murder him at any point? Like uh, I, I want to feel bad for Hera, but I feel like she's also a bitch at the same time. So it's like really hard to. Yeah, no, uh, she doesn't blame Zeus one bit. It's all the women's fault. See, what I think it is, is Zeus is like, you know, top of the game here. He is just the you know, all-powerful king of, uh, not Atlantis, what's it called? Uh, I'm not Olympus. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he can have any woman he chose. He chose Hera, and Hera's just kind of like going for the ride. Like, if Hera, you know, dumps him, he's just going to be like, oh, I got all these other bitches right here. So originally, it was um, the Titans. So I don't even know if mortals were even around at that point. So it was the Titans. And then they, um, I forget his name. I think it, it was an Atlas, but it was like Cronus or something. He had a prophecy that all of his children were going to kill him. So he ate them all. Um, Gaia, who's their mom, um, became pregnant with Zeus and tricked um, Cronus or whoever it was, um, and gave him a rock. So he swallowed a rock while Zeus was being raised somewhere else. So once Zeus, um, grew up, he basically killed all of them and, um, rescued all his siblings who were grown adults at this point. Yep. I think the second part of that story is he cut off Cronus's dick and genitals, threw him into the sea, and then what became of that was Athena. Aphrodite. Aphrodite. What's the difference between Aphrodite and Athena? Aphrodite is the goddess of love and beauty, and she's super petty. Um, Athena is like the goddess of wisdom, and um, she's like super freaking smart. But I, w I'm trying to figure out like what it means for the you know, god of times, genitals, to be thrown into the sea and become Aphrodite. Like, what is what's the symbology there? I have no idea. Like, I, I, there's certain symbologies in, like, Greek myths and this myths in general that I can understand. Like, the one about, like, sift this, like, you know, rolling up the boulder up the hill and then falling down before it gets, you know, right to the top and having to roll it up again. And that's just being his life now is a curse. But there's other ones where I'm like, what does this mean? Nothing. Hmm. Welcome to mythology where nothing makes sense. <laughs> so all all babies that it, that God or Titan would ever be able to have ever is now gone because his dick's cut off. So that sim that's symbolic of all the babies that could ever happen in the future by him. That's a symbol of his sexuality and reproduction as in general. So if that creates the most beautiful woman, that kind of makes a little sense. Well, does it create the most beautiful woman or is it the woman, is it the woman of love and wisdom? No, love and uh, beauty and stuff. She's like the most pretty, the prettiest god, goddess. Okay, so Poseidon's dick, not Poseidon, uh, Cronus's dick creates the most lovely woman. Yeah. So to, yeah. Cut your dick off, throw it in the ocean, you get beautiful women. Obviously, Nathan. But then you can't fuck those beautiful read, women, so. Read a book. Uh, which god are you? Because not a good one if you're not fucking your own daughter. Well... <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's true though it's really true yeah a lot of the Greeks were into like these uh, convoluted like uh, family trees too 
like that they make no sense and they're like all fucking each other's brothers sisters father mm. yeah well i feel like like uh in a tree underground where the roots are that's where it's like all gnarled and like sometimes they stick up out of the ground and they go back down into the ground they're crossing over each other i feel like that's where mythology lives is underground in the tree system and with humans that's when it gets above ground and be as a trunk with branches I feel like you're still underground when you're talking about... You're still in the infantile stages when you're talking about the gods and the titans. That actually makes sense. And you're making me think of Norse mythology, which um, there's like seven realms or something like that. And it they have a tree, like the tree of life. Um, the seven realms are in like the leaves. And there's like a, a snake and an eagle somewhere wrapped in around it too. It's freaking nuts. That's wild. You've talked about... A lot. You don't just talk about Greek mythology. A lot of your early episodes are focused mainly around Greek mythology. Um, but recently, I think the most recent episode I've heard was Irish mythology. Yeah. So you're really branching out on your show outside of what would be considered pop culture. I think a lot of Greek mythology, most people know some stories. Hercules, everyone knows a lot of the stories of Hercules. and uh, But you're branching out into some really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, I personally really like Greek mythology, and that's the only one I really know. But um, the internet is a wonderful place, and everybody knows everything. I found a couple people that know a shit ton about like uh, Celtic and Irish mythology. Um, this episode that actually is supposed to air tonight, um, we're talking about um, Celtic mythology. And I'm recording tomorrow with someone who's going to be talking about Egyptian, too. So it's oh, really wow, cool. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Raw. Yeah. Yep. The sun. I find Egyptian mythology super interesting because it's not like humanized characters. I mean, they kind of are, but they all have like faces of cats and dogs and stuff like that. Or it's just an eye is uh, like one of them. And it's like not like other mythologies of like different times where it's all like hu human like beings and stuff. I kind of like that aspect. The really cool thing about it, though, is even though they look different, um, all, a lot of the stories all intertwine. Like, a lot of them got, like, even, like, Irish and, like, Greek and Egyptian, they all kind of intertwine. They get their um, their stories. Like, they pass down through someone. Yeah. Or somewhere. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you bring that up because I've heard that uh, there's, like, a flood myth in, like, every religion almost. Like, about where the earth gets flooded because some god or the god says, you know, you guys been bad. So he floods the earth, and then everyone just, like, dies except for a couple people, and then they manage back to survival from the grace of God. And that myth is, like, in every religion. So you have to wonder if, like, at some point, you know, humanity was in one kind of similar kind of place. Just a really bad flood. Almost everyone died, and then they had, like, these myths that just spread up all the, throughout these all, all these religions. Hmm. I know the the core that takeaway from... Uh, uh, the the flood myth is always that there's such a small number of people that people are always banging their daughters and i think that's really what's the most important thing we keep coming back to with mythology and religion is incest yep and we haven't talked about incest in probably like 120 episodes so we are way overdue nathan okay there is a story in the uh the torah or the old testament the bible and essentially who was it uh it's the it was the guy who was fleeing because they were trying to like burn down his town or something. But anyway, they, so, from Sodom and Gomorrah, I think it was Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm mm -hmm. pretty certain it might be another one. That but, was Lot, I believe. But yeah, when it, his, he turn his wife turns around, and turns into a pillar of salt. Yeah, he, does he have two daughters? Yeah. Okay, so after that whole thing happens, they're like in a cave and they're just sleeping, and you know he gets drunk because you know he just lost everything, and so what do his daughters try to do? They try to seduce him. Mm -hmm. And so, because again, it has to be the woman's fault that something weird's going on. Yep, yeah. and then that's where things went kind of haywire. Mm -hmm. So, like, he creates a whole new town based around him having sex with his daughters. Yep. Yeah. Come on now, Adam and Eve, guys. Well, that's that's that's, well, that's a little different, right? Like, they were literally made for each other. They had perfect genes because they were perfect beings at that time. But I was. Uh, and sorry to cut you off. I was talking to my grandmother the other day, and she was talking about how, like, there's uh, there's all this bad stuff going on in the world because there's, like, killing and stuff. And I'm like, Grammy, there's always been killing. I'm like, if you believe in the Bible, 
the first of the first four people there was a, a mother and a father and then they had two sons and those two first sons to ever be born one of them killed the other one i'm like that's 50 percent of the population of new people yeah. Like and they're already killing each other. I'm like, this has always been a thing. Don't think that murder is a new thing. Right. Give me one second here. So, what has been what has been your favorite myth that you've talked about on the show thus far? You're 14 episodes in. Is it more than that now? I think 13 airs today. I have no idea. <laughs> That's totally fair because I always have to look what episode we're on to. So I get that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, my favorite so far. Um, we did an episode on cats and dogs, and I really liked that. I also really like um, Freya from Norse mythology. She's freaking awesome. She has two uh, cats that pull her um, little like chariot thing, and they help her fight and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's dream goals. Are they actually little cats, or are they they're, just? Sorry, they're big. They're bigger cats. I'll okay. have to show you a picture. But they're like giant house cats. Yeah. Ooh. So it's not like like lions or okay. t- it's not like a jungle cat. It's like a house cat, but they're huge. I don't know if that's more frightening or that's way more cool. Well, yeah, okay. No question. Like anyone can get a lion to pull something, <laughs> but a house cat? Mm. That's funny. I have, one thing that intrigues me about a lot of mythology is. I mean, this is, like, nothing that interesting, but it's also, like, they tend to stick to things in their own geographical region. So, like, in Egyptian mythology, there were, like, cats, dogs, like, those kind of dogs, uh, coyotes, uh, lions on occasion. And so a lot of their mythical symbols were those things. In like an uh, Indian kind of, well, let's say, okay, Native American, whatever. But in that kind of mythology, you have more like bears, deer, like kind of coyotes and uh, wolves as being certain symbols of mythology. And then, you know, you go to like a uh, Greek and it's a whole other kind of thing. Uh, Christian mythology, a lot of that is like with snakes and, uh, and pigs and fish because that's what surrounded them at that time. Mm-hmm. But it's just intriguing how, and I mean, it's no surprise, but the things that make up their cultural makeup is kind of a big part of what gets incorporated into the religion or the mythology. Yeah, like dragons for the Chinese. Yeah, because they had plenty of dragons over there. All over the place. Yeah, they do. When you were talking about Native Americans, yeah, they have a they focus a lot on the coyote. The coyote is a huge symbol and this huge guy. I don't I don't know a ton about it, but I know I've done a little bit of research where it's mostly like the coyote is like the evil is the god, their god or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like okay, this is just me like pulling shit on my ass, but okay. I feel like that coyote is most the coyote or wolf, but they're both kind of symbolic of humanity because they're kind of like humans because they kind of like get along together. Sometimes they're one wolf, sometimes they hang out, they work in groups. So I, I think it's the one they relate to the most out of like all, all the creatures. And it's like the animalistic spirit kind of like contained within another form. Oh, I relate to the bear the most. Yeah. Well, you are a bear. Thank you. <laughs> it's like one time we went to that ER. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And everyone thought that we were a gay couple. Yep. You're the bear. I was a twink. That was an assumption you made. Nobody alluded to that in any any regard. You just, like, actively made that a thing that happens. And, and, well, I was the muscular twink, though. I, mean, <laughs> I was the power twink. <laughs> well, if I was a bottom, I'd be a power bottom. So there we go. Jeez. I'm... All right, then. <laughs> so uh, another uh, a big part. I would say a big part of your show is you absolutely destroying your in attempts to pronounce things. Yeah. Uh, A lot of gods get called herpes. And uh, of course, we have the fuck father. That's actually that's a really good one. Um, Yeah. Hephaestus is uh, hepatitis. Yeah, that's it. That's the one I'm talking. I'm thinking about. Yeah. I can't pronounce things for shit, and I've tried looking them up, and I fuck it up, so I just kind of make it up. They all get funny names. And, of course, the the ep- the Norse episode was... that there You didn't stand a chance. That wasn't even fair. No. <laughs> but your guest was so good. Like, it, it made it... He knew how to pronounce everything, so it made it really, um, really beneficial in that regard. Yeah, and then... Um, the last episode, I think, where um, with the Celtic Irish myths, he 
was able to pronounce some of them too. And I was just like, I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's, it's super endearing. It's like you're learning with us and it's not super heavy on uh, like we, everything is a hundred percent exactly this because that's not what mythology is. Mythology is like, you can have the same story and it can be told 10 different ways and it's all right. Yeah, no, it depends. Yeah, that's basically what it is. I try to um, include all different versions because there's usually, like you said, 10 per uh, the story. Different different versions of the same stories. You go across different. Um, you, you usually like have a, a topic that you're on and you guys talk about that. Um, either that specific god or something within that specific god, like with Hercules, like the trial specifically. Um, and you do a, a full encapsulation of what that story or that god is about. And then um, one or two gods an episode, it seems. And then go on to, to the next episode. Um, different different regions completely. Irish, uh, we're talking Norse, Greek. Uh, we, you'll be doing Egyptian. I think that's wicked cool. It mixes things up a lot, and I love listening to the show. I think everybody else should download Savage Mythology for sure and give you more lessons and uh, learn some stuff in a really fun way. Yeah, definitely, because I don't know shit and I can't pronounce it. So come on and laugh with us. It's super not intimidating. I know there's there was one that I think you introduced me to that's like super in-depth. It's like scholarly, like they've researched each thing for like years and then they talk about it and that's not this show that's not savage mythology and i really like that because i get super intimidated by here are all of the facts versus like here's the general concept that now you know the general concept and can take that forward if you want to learn more about it learn more if not you didn't just waste six hours of your time learning about it you you listen to one episode yeah, I'm known for uh, going and doing my research like right before I'm supposed to record because I'm lazy as hell. and um, Because you don't want to be biased or over-educated on it. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's guys, the reason. You got <laughs> pitch it in a positive sense. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but I usually use Wikipedia, so really anyone can just go on Wikipedia and use their references and stuff or just mm-hmm. Google it. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of Greek names or names of gods, uh, one name that I got kind of confused with is I was listening to some video the other day and it was like talking about uh, the how Medusa got slain. And so I went through the whole story, but the whole story, they come up saying Heracles did, the, Heracles did this, Heracles did that. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure it was Hercules that did this. Mm-hmm. Heracles, Heracles, Heracles. I, I didn't realize that. So it's like. I didn't I, know that either until I listened to Savage Mythology. I'm like, wait a second. Her- Heracles, Her- oh my god, same person. <laughs> yeah, no, I honestly didn't know that either until I started recording. And the person that I was with was uh, is a librarian, so she, of course, knows her shit. And I was like, oh, okay, there's two different names for this guy. Great, thanks, Disney, you screwed me over. I like how the host of Savage Mythology is like, I didn't know either until I listened to Savage Mythology. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I only really know Greek mythology, and that's like a smidge of it. I'm just interested in it all. Well, I think I think it's pretty clear you retain a lot of this stuff really well because you're repeating a lot of this this stuff back in from your own memory on when, with minimal prompting. That like the second I talk about something, it's gone. Yeah, who knows if it's right though? Because my memory is kind of <laughs> shit. It's mythology. If you say it with confidence, it's right. That's very true. We can create our own mythology. Uh oh. Okay right now yeah we're doing it right now okay what are we creating okay uh so the main god's name is zach okay Mm -hmm. he he, what is he the god of uh everything except for dogs okay Okay. and the god of dogs is ned well no it's the god of everything except for dogs i know so there has to be a god of dogs well no he's this god except for dogs (laughs) (laughs) so there's no god of dogs no there's just a god for everything else but dogs. See, dogs are the void, and the void has to be avoided. No, you can't avoid dogs. Come on now. I didn't say puppies. Um, <laughs> dogs and puppies, same thing. They're both amazing. Now, cats are the eternal beings of oh. metaness. Okay. So where does uh, Zach live? Uh, in a house. In a house. Uh, anywhere in particular? Or? In a side of a volcano. A house inside a volcano? 
Yeah. All right. Sounds is, 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 Nate, are you pitching Super Jail? <laughs> a little bit, actually. <laughs> A and volcano in a volcano. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, though, Zach can swim in the lava because he's a god. Mm-hmm. He can't swim in water though, because that water is actually in in ter- indeterminate from his form. I see. So it, it's like oil and water. Yeah. Well, it's like if he goes into water, he's like he's dividing by zero onto himself, and then if he does that, he can't do anything. So interesting. So is it just just Zach? That's the whole mythology. <laughs> Zach got everything but dogs. Interesting. What rich fucking culture we have on this show. See, I thought we were going to make this together, but... <laughs> oh, I was trying, but every time I tried to say something, you said no. And that's yeah, not you... how improv works, so fuck yourself. Yeah, okay. you nixed that pretty hard. You nixed everything I said, so fuck yourself. Okay, that's a good point. Okay. Yes, and... Okay, let me try this again. Yes, and... That's not how it works either. Fuck! You're supposed to. You're supposed to carry on the end. So okay. when I said, "Oh, so the god of dogs then is Ned," you'd be like, "Yes," and he does this and this. That's how improv works. And then there's Charlie. Don't fucking bring up Charlie now. Okay, I'm sorry. Do I even <laughs> want to know who Charlie is? Uh, Charlie, destroyer of things. Destroyer of things. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of things. We haven't found out, but uh, he does destroy things, apparently. Usually, you know how, like, on your stove, where you turn to, like, turn on the stove, how sometimes those little things can come off? Yep. And then he destroys those. Oh, okay. That's mm-hmm. all. I and then he, hide, he hides them for, like, six months and then brings them back and is like, huh, it was a joke the whole time after I just bought new ones. You know who did that kind of shit? Calvin. Steve B. Steve B. Yeah. yeah, the one from college who was, like, in Nick's dorm room. Oh, yeah, 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 the one that was dating Katie. Yeah, because he would, like, go in, like, to every... He went to every uh, toilet in... Well, actually, every urinal in the uh, the university. And, you know, those the things that go in the urinal, the caps? Okay, yeah. Like, like the metal ones, he screwed those off and just had a whole collection of them. Why? I don't know. Didn't he have, like, a... TV that he gutted out and made into a fish tank too. Yes, that's actually a really cool idea. That is really cool. This is our mythology. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much of it's true, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because I called it mythology instead of history. Yeah, there and that's you go. the biggest difference. Yeah. I can make stuff up. Exactly. So, where is the best place to find your podcast? Um, that's a great question. Um, I listen to it on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, we have. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. We're everywhere. We also have a Facebook. That's where I usually am promoting stuff: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The and the Facebook group for it. You have like a a group and you have like a main page, both. Yeah. And you post a lot of stuff in there. You post a lot of memes, a lot of really funny stuff about what the episodes have been about. You post uh, a lot of like supporting articles and stuff and anything that you just find cool about mythology you're actually super active and i give you full props on that because we are not at all we don't even post our own episodes on facebook anymore (laughs) well facebook blocks them facebook blocks our own episodes from being posted by us it's really effed up and actually so technically it blocks it when i have um libsyn automatically post it for us they post it everywhere for us Mm -hmm. um but I went on the other day and tried to post an episode directly to our Facebook, and they blocked me putting my own episode on there because it was a Libsyn link. Like, go fuck yourself, Facebook. That's crazy. They don't like Libsyn. It really seems that way. So I highly, highly suggest giving a listen. If you were to suggest an episode for them to listen to, is there one in particular that you think would be a that your best example of what you do or maybe the most fun one you had or any criteria you want um now you're making me think and remember these episodes i don't even know what episode i'm on so um i honestly i keep just going to the hercules one because that Mm -hmm. one's really it has a lot of information shoved into that hour um, but really, you can start with any of them, and it, they're all pretty much the same a- in the same aspect. They have the same mispronunciations, same kind of stuff. I was definitely going to uh, going to suggest the Hercules one as the the first one to get into. I like the um, I think it was not last week, but the week before Pandora, 
Um, mm-hmm. You guys talked about Pandora's box in that episode, yep. uh, or jar, if you will. Um, so I learned a whole bunch from that episode, and it, like it's always just a lot of fun. Highly, highly suggested Savage Mythology. Go check it out, guys. Hey, Nate. Yeah? What you thinking about? Oh, well, I was like, oh, was that the end of the podcast? I don't know, is it? I don't know. You, oh, you said check it out, guys. <laughs> it sounded like it was, but we didn't say we need to talk. Mm-hmm.